Known as the Alpha Tribe of the Guru Nation, the Silver Fangs are more of a traditional leadership type system. They are known for their physical beauty, their courage, and their honor in battle. Now, unfortunately, because they have tried to keep the tribe pure throughout the ages, some of the younger members now have some noticeable quirks. Nothing overly dramatic, but it definitely is noticeable. Due to the glorious and rarely embellished history of the Silver Fangs, it oftentimes lays heavy, heavy burdens on its members. And these same members are also too proud to ask for help. Werewolf pride is definitely a thing, but this particular tribe is known for it. And sadly, the plight of the Silver Fangs is that of the Guru Nation itself. Outwardly, they like to project their strength, but inwardly, their turmoil bubbles and festers because they don't express it, they don't deal with it. Inbreeding has been a huge problem for this tribe, and this tribe is particularly susceptible to Hirano, which is werewolf depression. This tribe has many sins of the past, but they are trying to set it right. But is it too late for them to do so? The Silver Fangs weren't always united as a single tribe as they are now. They used to be 13 different houses. This goes back to the dawn of time and the physical location of where this tribe began was in the Russian tundra. Now these 13 houses all had a single alpha running their, their particular house. Each of them had ancestry connecting them to the wolves of the pale tundra. These were the original wolves that Luna bestowed her gift, the touch of silver. Now each of these houses were ruled by a king or a queen. They were not that picky when it came to gender. In the modern night setting, however, the tribe's power and their dominance has been dwindling. Of the original 13 houses, only seven remain. These houses are still ruled by kings or queens, and the leaders of these houses, they will report to the single ruler, known as the High King or the High Queen, whoever seems to be ruling during this time. The rest of this follows in very typical king's court. You have your advisors, you have your generals, you have the stewards that help out as well. Titles are also a very common part of Silverfang lifestyle. So what is a Silver Fang? It's kind of a big question. The Silver Fangs put a huge emphasis on family, and this tribe has mostly been filled with homids. They believe, rightly or wrongly, that only those who were raised within power or near power know what power is and how to wield it. Pure bloodlines were very important to the Silver Fangs, and only now, generations later, is this proving to be a bit of a problem. They were extremely protective of their kinfolk. And this, of course, contributed to inbreeding and the madness that they are now starting to suffer from. Silver Fangs embrace tradition. It is very important for them, knowing the history of why things are done a certain way and then respecting the process and the ritual. This, of course, extends to each house as each individual house will have their own ritual. They will have their own ceremonies the Silver Fangs are a little bit self-absorbed when it comes to their political culture, and this is because they follow their own court. Many Silver Fangs believe that as a tribe, they have been divined leaders of the Guru Nation. And this has, of course, been challenged and disrespected by many of the other tribes. It's only been in recent days that they have adjusted their attitudes just a little bit, and they don't really have that many allies, but they do have some rivals, most notably the Shadow Lords. In their past, the Silver Fangs have history that tie them to the Celestines. Their totems will tie them back to Helios and Luna, and the Silver Fangs are constantly trying to find a balance between Sun and the Moon, and when this balance is working, they're able to be effective rulers, but when things are not in sync, well, it's not a good thing. Now, before we move on to some history of the Silver Fangs, if you are enjoying today's video, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content like this from myself, then please hit subscribe with the bell notification. When it comes to tribal histories, everyone is a little different, but some common threads appear, embellishment, having difficulty separating the facts from the myths. The Silver Fangs are, of course, no different. I mentioned that the Silver Fangs believe that they are divined to rule the Guru Nation, but the stories as to how this actually happened, they are a little mixed. 
Some believe that Wolf himself rescued Gaia from the jaws of death, and because of this they were granted their ivory white coats. Some believe that Gaia created them with their white coats and this is proof that they were designed or destined to be leaders of the Guru Nation. The Silver Fangs agreed to a seven year rule term limit essentially during this period. One Silver Fang wasn't happy with this and he went behind Luna's back and made a pledge with Helios. Luna would eventually forgive the tribe, but they would not escape her wrath. In the beginning times whenever a Silver Fang would rule for more than seven years, they would be struck with a madness. This is not a particularly common story and those that actually believe it work very hard to make sure that no leader stays in leadership for more than seven years. Time moves on and the tribe would continue attempting to rule the Guru Nation. This would bring us to the first War of Rage. If you ask any other tribe they will tell you that it was started by a Silver Fang. If you ask the Silver Fangs they will tell you a different story. They would say that it was instigated by the Naga. They claim that a leader at the time, Constantos the Savage, was manipulated and corrupted by a Naga named Venata. The Silver Fangs also claim that during the Impergium other Fera attacked the Silver Fangs while they were all culling humanity. Some within the tribe believe that the Silver Fang who started the War of Rage was well past his seven year term and was susceptible to the madness because they were not making good or wise decisions and the War of Rage only ended when his successor stepped down. Now one of the oldest Karens in existence for the Silver Fangs is Sept of the Crescent Moon. It has existed for millennia and it can also be found in Russia. Russia is believed by many including the Silver Fangs to be their ancestral homelands and throughout the ages in this area the Silver Fangs involved themselves in politics. This is how they get that attachment to the nobility. Because they excelled and thrived in the cities they also had to do combat with the vampires quite a bit. And from Russia they also expanded and could be found through other noble houses as nobility tended to marry themselves off to make peace treaties. Through the Dark Ages after the fall of Rome, the Silver Fangs excelled in this particular tumultuous time. Some of the worst minions of the Weaver and the Worm were clashing during this period and the Silver Fangs due to their political nature were able to fuel the fire. They were capable warriors so they had that going for them as well. But they liked to stoke tensions and they kept lords distrustful of each other and in this chaos that they sowed they took territory. Now the rise of the church also severely weakened the hold that the Silver Fangs had because of the political power and the just sheer wealth that the church was able to command during this particular time. During the Victorian era the discovery of the Pure Lands meant many of the werewolves, many of the Guru Nation, they wanted to go seek this new land, they wanted to go conquer it for the nation. There were a great number of Silver Fangs among them. The nation also came into great conflict with the werewolves that were already there. And it wasn't until the rise of the Storm Eater that the tribes had to work together to put this massive, massive bane back. During the American Revolution that also happened in the Victorian era, the Silver Fangs were very divided in their support of the different sides. Bringing us into the modern night setting or the modern werewolf setting, this would be the end of the traditional leadership of Silver Fangs, at least as it's concerned to the Guru Nation. An entire Silver Fang house was corrupted by worm influence, the House of Austere Howl. The Russian House of the Crescent Moon, while still around, took many, many hard political hits. And the Asian House of the Blood Red Crest, they had a dramatic drop in birth rates. The leader of the American House Worm Foe was also falling into madness. And guess who filled the power vacuum? This was, of course, the Shadow Lords. And in the modern setting, or in the 90s, I suppose, we have. The Week of Nightmares where Baba Yaga rises. Baba Yaga was a very very powerful vampire. They arose back in Russia and created just sheer pandemonium and the Silver Fangs were at the forefront of that war. 
along with many other vampires who were also trying to put Baba Yaga back down. They were victorious, but it was at extreme loss of life for the Silver Fangs. But a new ruler did emerge from this, the Queen of the Crescent Moon. She reinvigorated the remaining Silver Fangs, and the Queen's name was Tamara Tvarovich. Now, as I mentioned, the Silver Fangs, they try to find balance between Helios and Luna, the sun and the moon. And there is two lodges in this tribe. Each of them has a very specific purpose and a very specific goal, things that they are dealing with. If you are a member of this tribe, you are also a member of one of these two lodges. Now, the Sun Lodge, which is dedicated to Helios, they deal with the worldly matters, things that happen in the physical world. Politics, land disputes, dealing with other Guru. The Moon Lodge, this deals with more of the spiritual world. The Umbra, exploring the deep Umbra. Banes, Fomori, the, the horrible things that come out of the spiritual realm. As for the seven houses that still remain, you have the biggest and oldest one, House of the Crescent Moon. This one is in Russia. You have House of Wormfoe. This one did not fall. This one is still around. Now in the Americas, the ruler who was going crazy, Jacob Morningkill. Now this king was actually killed by a worm spy who was a silver fang. This spy tried to assume control of this house and rule it for himself and of course the worm, but his plot was thwarted by Jonas Albrecht. Now Albrecht was the great grandson of the old ruler, Jacob Morningkill, who was exiled because he wasn't going crazy and he actually wanted to do the right things. Albrecht was able to recover the tribe's lost and most precious fetish, the Silver Crown, and he used it to get rid of the worm spy and take control of this particular house. And since Albrecht has taken control of the House of Wormfoe, he's been quite a hands-on ruler, really getting in there with it. He doesn't stand on tradition, but he does get results. So he is a little bit different than many of the rulers who have come before him. His goal has been that of restoring the Silver Fang's respect among that of the Guru Nation. House of the Gleaming Eye is like a secret police force for the Silver Fangs. Their job is to root out corruption wherever the worm has gained a foothold. They can be found normally through Northern Europe, France, Germany, and Scandinavia. House of the Blood Red Crest can be found in Asia, but their numbers are severely dwindling due to the low birth rates. House Wiseheart is still around. House Unbreakable Earth, they are ambassadors and emissaries for the Silver Fangs. Located in Canada and the Midwest of the United States, they are go-betweens for the tribe and the rest of the Guru Nation, so they are the mediators, you could say. And finally, House Austere Howl. This is the house that is believed by the Gleaming Eye to be corrupted by the Worm. They believe this because of their shared history with the kinfolk of the White Howlers. To make matters a little bit more complicated, the queen of this house has found refuge within one of the Fianna's biggest camps, the Tri-Spiral. Because there was 13 houses and seven are left, that means six have disappeared. House Golden Sky was a respected house in the ancient times as they led most of the Silver Fangs, but when they came into conflict with House of Crescent Moon and their conflict boiled over into violence, they were wiped out in a single night. House Conquering Claw could have been found in the Roman times, or ancient Roman times. They were overcome with the vampires who also found Rome to be a good place to be, and the ones that survived the vampire attacks, they fell to Hirano. House Winter Snow could have been found in Great Britain, France, and Holland. Unfortunately, this particular tribe fell into obscurity after their king alienated themselves from their allies and the Black Spiral Dancers, sensing a moment of opportunity, they pounced and destroyed this house. The Ice Pack is thought to be completely extinct. They were believed to have been one of the purest forms of the Silver Fangs. Occasionally through history, one does make an appearance, but that's kind of a rare thing. The sightings have only happened, and very rarely, in Northern Europe, Russia, and the United States. The Unknown was a house that existed up until the War of Rage. It is said that this particular house committed such egregious war crimes 
during this time that Gaia herself got so disgusted with this tribe that she expelled them from the Earth. The Silver Spiral is not necessarily a house, but it is a designation given to Silver Fangs who have fallen to worm corruption. Now, if you liked today's video on the Silver Fangs, you will probably enjoy the one that I've done on the White Howlers. That will be on your screen now. Thank you to every single one of my patrons who support me through Patreon. If you want to support my channel and the work that I do, you can join me over on Patreon. Link is in the description. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.